around the waiting room. But meanwhile, as chair is the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. And I got somebody else in the waiting room. Let me let them in. And um, we are using the Zoom platform for this remote meeting and all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public also has access to contemporaneously listen and is, if desired participate in this meeting and you can find the um, the way to get into the meeting on the publicly posted notices of the meeting on the town website and also by requesting a direct link from the town clerks so um there you have it we're we're on and does anyone have any additions to the agenda before we start here i do i have new business all right okay Burma. and um anyone else and um and seeing none, I guess we'll move right on. And I, I know Julie, you're in here. I didn't see the um, minutes for the last select board meeting. Oh, sorry, they, I I wasn't in the office today. They are posted on the website, though. Okay, I just haven't had a chance to review those. I guess so. We'll we'll put those off till the next meeting to approve the minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, And that leads us to our, our, our esteemed guest tonight. Um, Kirk, thank you for taking time out on a Monday evening to, um, to um, welcome the village of Rochester to your, your flock under your care now. Yeah, yeah uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I mostly just wanted to, to stop in and say hello, uh, to introduce myself to those of you who might not know me. I'm not officially in office yet. I don't get sworn in till January 6th. But, uh, but they've, uh, the state's been keeping me very active. Uh, all the new uh, uh, representatives have been going through uh, literally four or five hours a day of training since the election, uh, which they don't usually do, but because it's all online, they, they feel like we need more, uh, more training, which yep. has been fascinating and great. Um, and uh, so mostly I just wanted to say hello and, uh, uh, let you know that I am available. Um, what I've been trying to do is set up with all the towns in the district, uh, one of your meetings where if you're open to it, I would just come and, and if there's anything that was specifically pertinent that you wanted to know, I could have it. But more importantly, uh, if there's stuff you wanted to, to talk to me about that you'd know you had a designated time and place to do that, uh, although you can call me anytime, you know, if your town, if your town clerk or anyone has any issues, questions, and I'm going to try to pay attention to any kind of legislation that might come down and be a surprise for, for you all, where things are going to make you do diff something different or pay money or anything like that. So, uh, <clears throat> cause unfunded, unfunded mandates and all that are, are, are no fun to have as a surprise. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, on that topic, I guess um, um, we'd definitely appreciate you um, alerting us to any grant opportunities that you think may be um, um, appropriate to um, our town and, and neighboring towns, of course. But, um, you know, there's always, um, we're always ready to, to get any help that we can um, budget wise with them. Um, monies that are out there and slated for the towns to apply for. And sometimes um, they don't know about it. So yeah, I, I am not, I don't know what my committee assignment is going to be uh, yet, but I have joined a few different caucuses. Uh, one of which is uh, uh, the economic development for small rural town caucus uh, and uh, a, a few others that, that I feel like might be able to provide some information and be able to funnel 
that exactly that kind of information to yeah. to, yeah. to you guys. Great. Great. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any um, questions for Kirk? I guess really the biggest um, question that we're wrestling now is how do we conduct the um, the annual town meeting? Yeah, um, they, uh, you will, the, almost the first thing that will uh, be on the agenda for the legislative session uh, as soon as they are in place is a uh, bill authorizing towns to officially either switch to an Australian ballot if they want to. Uh, and I know some towns haven't even really, like Bethel didn't even really wait for the official authorization to do so. They just voted that they were going to switch to Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. But it would give you permission to do that. Uh, it would also give towns permission to push back their town meeting. If they really want to meet in person, uh, they could push it back, uh, you know, probably as late as June, uh, just so if you want to rent a tent and do it that way, you would, you would have permission to do so. And then the third provision on that bill is to uh, uh, basically empower the Secretary of State's office to be creative in helping towns find solutions around their their challenges for these uh, for their for having their town meetings. Now, of course, if you switch to Australian ballot, you got to one reason why they want it to come through in a hurry is because then your and stuff what you'd have to get your uh, candidates to proclaim early. Uh, you know, from the floor could still happen, but you know, that becomes a write-in vote rather than a, uh, from the floor. So, so there's mailing costs that are associated with switching to Australian ballot. At this point, uh, there, you know, that whether or not that any money is going to come to the towns to help make up for that is uh, basically uh, they're, what they're looking for is to see if the governor is going to put that in his budget then they do believe he is likely to put some money in the budget for that. Uh, but, but nothing's guaranteed at this point. But, but that's coming right along. So if you all want to start thinking about how you want to go about it, uh, it that's going to be the very first bill that's going to pass. And it will probably pass in about a week after the session starts. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, you said something about from the floor. Now, I do I understand correctly that I know Rochester's talked about doing Australian ballot and pretty much decided to, to do so. It seems yeah. like. Um, am I correct that that means there's absolutely no public informational meeting or anything at all? It's everything's done via Australian ballot. We we've set up a the Australian ballot, um, and also we have uh, figured out that we'll probably have two informational meetings. It'll be near the end of February. We haven't figured the exact dates out yet. We'll let you know further down the road on that. It's, uh, but we are going to have two informational meetings and voting will be on the March 1st and it'll be from 10 to seven and hopefully at the high school. Where and you said voting on March 1st, okay. Yep, it'll be like the town meeting day we'll, where we usually have our meeting at night That'll be the town meeting day. And okay. we're gonna just have two informational meetings sometime in February after the, the uh, town reports are printed and, and put out where we'll answer questions and be available. It'll be through Zoom, I believe. We haven't finalized it yet, but those okay. dates will be coming out later. Thank you. I, I, I thought there had to be some sort of thing like that, but I wasn't sure. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Does, does that mean that um, the town is going to vote on the unmerger with Stockbridge or is that something different? That's something different, I believe, right? Guys? Yeah, there is, there is nothing on the, the slate right now with that. I know the town of Stockbridge has presented their select board with the petition to have a vote in Stockbridge about that. And then if they, if the town of Stockbridge votes in favor of that, then the town of Rochester has 60 days, I think, to, to set up a vote to respond to that. But no, that's not, um, that will not probably be part of the, our town meeting. I would um, Dune, as far as that goes, even Bowen sent me a short article that will be in this week's Herald 
about the committee that RS, the RSUD has formed to talk about that. Okay. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, well, very so it's, it's 90 days. We 90, have 90 days. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, so anything else you have for me that you'd like, uh, and, and would you be interested in me visiting you on your, your, uh, last meeting of every month uh, during the session, just to, again, in case you've You're forgotten. More than welcome. That would be great to have your input. Yeah. 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 I would I, be interested in getting your, your email address right here uh, so that everybody can get in, co in contact with you if need be. Yeah. You want me to put it in the chat? Or, sure. Uh, I would like it to be in the minutes as well. Oh, OK. I mean, the, the easiest is, is the, my legislative e email address, which is kwhite at uh, ledge.state.bt.us. Uh, Good. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll right. put you on the plan. My original intention was, uh, and hopefully we can get back this in the summer, my original intention was, you know, to take a Saturday or Sunday or something and, and find a spot in each town, you know, once a month and just, you know, s sit in Sandy's bakery for a couple hours and, you know, so people can wander by and tell them what they think. Um, Kirk, I might suggest that as far as I know, um, <coughs> depending on, you know, how everything goes with COVID, they'll continue to have our, um, every Friday, our um, farmer's markets on the park. Yep. That might also be a good vehicle sometime for you to stop by because be we great. get generally get a lot of people there. Yeah, I, I certainly visited it during the campaign. So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So. Well, um, thank you for um, time out. And now you can leave and start celebrating our birthdays. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have one for you, dude. Uh, okay. you know, so. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Thank you. Good night. night. Um, so Burma, what, what did you want to talk about? Well, um, I have been very concerned about a rumor mill that's been activated in regard to COVID cases. And um, I find it very dis disturbing that I have to listen to rumors about people coming down with COVID, various names being bandied about numbers being bandied about. And I find it very um, upsetting and creates a lot of anxiety. And I don't think I'm alone in that because we all know that the number of cases in Vermont is growing. We know that the spread is continuing. We know that family and friends get together without regard to quarantining or using precautions in in this town and in other towns. And so I am asking the town if they would take it upon themselves to create a venue, a way to alert the public through various mediums. It could be a Facebook page, it could be Front Porch Forum, it could be the town community um, communication website. I'm just looking for ways to ally the rumors that, that go running around and to see if perhaps the health officer could connect with the State Department of Health. This afternoon, I had a very lengthy discussion with a woman named Leslie. She encourages anyone with any questions to call the following number, 802. 863-7240 and use option eight. So it's 802-863-7240, option eight. As of this week, they're adding four more people to their staff. So there will be 16 people working on a staff to answer any COVID related questions. So what I am asking is if the town selectmen 
who deal with the town business to make sure that the welfare of the town is in their, in their sites, if they would authorize the health officer to go to the Vermont health website and use that phone number if there are any questions and keep the town apprised of the number of active cases in our town. Now it's very tricky because a person gets tested. It could take one to three days to get the results. It could take one to two days or longer to get that posted on their website. So there is a large window in which someone could inadvertently be spreading the virus. But we have to do the best that we can with that. So I'm, I'm not asking for a reply right now. I would like it to be discussed uh, amongst the selectmen and come up with some ideas if that's not a viable option to figure out some way of keeping the town informed of the number of active cases that are happening in our town. And so I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this. I know it's not over. We all know it's not over and people can sometimes have a false sense of security thinking that they are going to get a vaccine so they may not need to do the precautions that are necessary for everyone to chip in. So I'm asking if you can envision a way of making the information available to the townspeople. Pat, you um, want to respond to that? Um, I believe that there is an announcement, a statement on both the Rochester Community Facebook page by our task force members and on Front Porch Forum um, about this issue. Um, there has to be a little bit of uh, official um, confidentiality because we are dealing with medical conditions. So um, the statement that was made is, is how it was recommended to be made by the state, by our task force. Um, John, White, our health officer, um, I believe is also in that loop. Um, if you remember back in March, uh, we created a task force um, to help with information and help people that have been affected. Their content is still readily available on that Facebook page. If they did communicate. Um, I, I, I wholeheartedly approve of not revealing any personal information or any medical information whatsoever. The only thing that I'm asking for is that the number of active cases be, be kept current and that we understand. I, I saw after the fact that uh, a letter went out to Stockbridge on December 22nd saying that there was someone in the school that had an active COVID case and nothing was presented in Rochester at that time. So I'm just asking if there's someone who can be officially appointed by the town to take that on to make sure that that information is disseminated amongst various sites. It could be the Rochester town site. It could be a Facebook. It, 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 it is, Burma, as, as Pat was just saying. In fact, I was just at a meeting with the COVID task force before this meeting talking about this very topic and going over the, um, you know, the information that we, we can legally communicate about that. As far as I understand, there are two new verified cases in the town. And it's the, the main thing to communicate is that everything is a risk and it's not just in Rochester, but um, throughout the whole valley and people have turned up positive that have no idea where or how they've been exposed. And it's just, um, we, have, we have to just continue to minimize our, our exposures and, and wear a mask and keep your distance and, and be patient and vigilant. But in terms of, um, having a, a tally somewhere up there where every time there's a positive case in Rochester, it's going to, going to show up. I, I don't know if that's, that's really, um, 
re really realistic, but that was on <laughs> my my agenda to bring up tonight was an update on the fact that yes, there are another couple positive cases in the town, and then I understand a few more throughout the valley, and um, that's really can weird. Can legally we can't say more than that. I think it is realistic to say that you can post whether it's two cases or eight cases or no cases. I think it's it's an important piece well, of information. The, the, um, it's really we default to the, the state in terms of contact tracing. And, and if you've been exposed to someone that's been proven positive, the state is the one that will reach out and contact you and send, hey, step back you you've been exposed but can i ask a question as a member of the public or is this the wrong time no no this is why you're here yeah okay um this is my area of expertise sir is research and the two data types that i work with the most are medical data and education data so the issue of COVID in schools is something that i've been following very closely so um i want to just say that there are some issues when I watch the way COVID information is portrayed at any kind of political level, town level, state level, and you'll probably hate me for saying this, but I'm just going to say that a lot of people are very much afraid of, of starting a panic or being blamed, especially kind of at the state level. I see that a lot. I see it a lot from the Department of Education. Um, the thing is that in, at the state level, and this is something that we can do here in the town, that we could do a better job about, they, the state, when it does the contact tracing, they contact the contacts of a person who's positive. Well, okay, let's just say that I got sick, okay? And I just went about my life and didn't know I was sick for five days. And I went, and let's say I broke protocols and I went and, and, and spent some time with my sister and her family, who's a teacher, who then went to school and and through some uh, touching of one thing that somebody else touched, then then kids get it. Okay, so that's two levels. It, this is possible. Okay, this is not impossible. This is possible. That would be two levels. Well, the state would notify my sister, and if she was negative at the time, they wouldn't. Even if she's positive, they won't notify anybody until her test results come back. So this is how COVID gets away from us because the contact tracing is just one level down and we really need it to be more than that. We need to contact the contacts and then the contacts of the contacts until we follow it all the way to the end and we've reached all the people that could possibly have been exposed. And the reason we have to do this is that COVID can be invisible for a very long time or even for the entire time you're sick and it's it's really hard to to jump on it and smush it. So I think that maybe that's something that our town could look at doing in the very least would be, and I know this is tricky with HIPAA, when you're doing research and you talk about patients, you're only allowed to talk about them to the level of the state that they live in. You're not allowed to get any more specific than that, but that's if you're a medical, prof excuse me, professional. If people who are sick want to go on the website and just click the one more sick button without it, you know, even by keeping their privacy, they could say without revealing who they are, we could give them an opportunity to say I'm sick or, um, uh, or we could get involved in doing a better job at contact tracing than they can do or have chosen to do at the state level. And I'm happy to answer any questions about um, the spread of COVID and the medical issues around it uh, surrounding COVID because it is my field and the state, you know, the people that talk to you from the state, they have reasons for making the decisions that they make. But because people in the schools are sick, that is proof that the protocols that we have in place at the schools are not sufficient to protect everybody. Ipso facto, this is truth. So we have to make sure that we do our best as a town to protect our citizens. Um, Sheila, this is Martha Slater from the Herald. I don't know your last name and I would like to quote something you said, but I need your last name if you can tell me. It's Braun. Oh, okay. You're Amy's sister. <laughs> Hi, Martha. Okay, I was gonna say, I think this sounds like Amy's sister, but okay, thank you. Yes, it is. 
I'm sorry if I've offended anyone in the room. That no, wasn't no, my no. intent, but no, I get no. very tired of hearing half truths and twisting of, you know, the data. And you haven't, nobody in this room has done that. I'm just saying <laughs> that it happens. So, um, be warned, everyone. Um, stay home. <laughs> And no, it's not. It's no. That is good advice for the children as well as the adults. Yes. Yeah. So, um, the um, I know. Does anyone have anything else they want to contribute to this other than? Um, <coughs> no, we have to. Um, you know, even with the uh, the. Um, the um, vaccine on the horizon. There's no reason to to um, relax vigilance and, and attentiveness. And um, um, so, so I, in, I, in terms of, of of having an official counter on the town website or something, I, I don't know how how realistic that is. But it's um, the the that's what we're saying now. There are there are cases in our community and and the need what's, to, not, what's not realistic. I'm I'm having trouble understanding. What? Can I second that question? Um, the, the state does have a town by town tally. And yeah, there might be a couple of days lag between true and the numbers, but uh, vermonthealth.gov, I believe is what it is, um, does have it where you can look it up by your town. It doesn't necessarily say four. I think it says zero and then one to five and then six to 10. Um, and so I, I, I do know that there is a place that the state of Vermont goes to for that. I mean, so basically what we would be doing is going to the state website and then regurgitating what they're doing, but people are not directed to contact the town office and say, hey, I've got COVID. They're, they're, they're directed to go to the Vermont Department of Health. And well, that's what if they're allowed but, to. Couldn't the, couldn't the uh, health officer the person that the town votes on every year to become health officer, couldn't that health officer do that monitoring and let the town know on these different sites? I mean, what? why is that not feasible? What? What is the problem with that? Well, there is, I mean, posted today was on the Facebook and on Front Porch Forum was the information. Right, so I- So this is happening already. Okay, so this is after the fact. I mean, you know, this I heard about a few days ago. It got posted like yesterday or, yes. you know, and so. Well, like, there's also the issue of you don't want to just be posting rumor. Exactly, that's my point. You you hit the nail on the head. We don't want to be posting rumor. Right, so we which, go which does um, create a bit of a lag. You can't just anytime someone says, "Oh, I heard someone has COVID," you go and post. No, that's why you would you yeah. would use the health officer, the appointed and voted in health officer who takes on that responsibility to to get it right and to post it as as it comes up. I I just think that that would be a service to the town, and I don't see how why that would be a problem. I really agree with you, Verma. Thank you. So am I correct in, from what Patty said that both the Facebook and Front Porch Forum sites for the town of Rochester have uh, the latest information they've been able to receive from the state health department? Um, they would reflect information there, but they actually are posting information that is generated from the town itself and, and the the four members on the COVID task force and and the attempts to distill um, rumor from reality and, and the fact that legally we have to be very um, circumspect about not pointing to people and, and, and telling. Yeah, I just wanted to say something in my article about where anyone who was reading this and wanted to know places to look for information. That would be- oh, the, 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 um, the state 
Department of Health would be oh, the, the first. Right. Okay. And I, I got that woman's number that you had, Burma. So I wrote that down too. But I thought people right. could also look at those two websites. And we, yeah, right. and the town Facebook page. And the and and so, yeah, well, I guess we'll talk about this, Burma. And, and is, is this something that um, John would take on to, to um, keep that tally? But I mean, it's... Um, He's a great person. I mean, he is a great person. There's not a question of that. It's a it's a matter of the um, managing um, managing um, worry and concern, and um, you know, in in town and, and not hiding information. That's for sure. But but it's um, I know it's it's a it's it's definitely tricky to giving um, people data is not it's it's like don't tell people how to feel just give them the information people can figure out how to feel on their own but this fear of starting you know that emotions might go the way you don't want them to just like that's just put that aside and let us have the data as citizens let us know right. i think if people have accurate information they will use it wisely. SPT I think the key is the accurate information and getting yeah. accurate information. Right. And it's and it's the um I don't think we can try and jump in front of the the state health department and I'm not asking for that. I've got anything. So I don't you know I don't know if we'll get information that much sooner um than that, but it's um they're working very hard on the state level to get it as much accurate information available to the public as possible. Yes, yes. I do know yes. that, that that's why they're adding four more people in this, this COVID uh, interfacing with the public because they're worried about the public and they yes. don't want the public to get caught up in rumors. They want the public to have real information. Right. <laughs> I mm -hmm. worry if yeah. we Go put ahead. information. Out, I'm worried that we put information out there, and so then you'll have information on the state level and information on the local level. And if those numbers never agree, the credibility of everybody's numbers goes down the drain. If 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 they don't, that's if they don't, possible. that's not thing. possible. That's not well, possible. It, it would be if John uh, didn't have an internet connection that day and he wasn't able to update the town website. Well, then his numbers would be different from the state and and someone would say, well, then I don't know whose numbers to trust. It, oh, well, God, we are so used to that already. Everywhere <laughs> you look, they get different numbers. Um, well, if, it, gonna... if his numbers match up every couple of days, that'll be an improvement. Joan, you had something you want to say? Well, I was just wondering if there are other towns, uh, that, you know, in the vicinity that might be doing this sort of thing already and maybe have a model that would help um, let you decide whether you know it might be something Rochester wants to try or not. I don't know who else might be doing it except you know I read on Vermont Digger that Burlington is keeping its own records but of course that's Burlington. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you know some of the other towns Bethel, South Royalton, whatever. Just a thought. All right. Well, it's um yeah, definitely more information is better than less information. So it's um it's a matter of um you Getting know accurate information is the accurate. hard thing. That's the hard thing. Yeah. And yeah. and and um where that goes, I don't know if it. So anyway, um thank you, Sheila and Burma, for for bringing this up, and that's it was on um my list of things to talk about tonight. So I guess that's um. You know, Could I just make one more quick comment? Sure. Um, about about accurate information. Um, the thing is that you've got you've got the data that we get from the state that tells us how many confirmed cases of COVID there are, right. and then you've got the actual number of COVID cases that are out there in the world. Those two numbers are not the same, and they never will be. And it's not fair to expect it, but it's why. We really have to know when there are cases in our town, because the you know from the research that I've read, you multiply the number that you know about by almost a factor of ten, or in some researchers encourage you to multiply it by more, 
because there are people who never get sick or never, I mean, you know, they're, they're positive, they're transmitting the virus, but they don't get any symptoms or they don't get enough symptoms or it just doesn't last very long. And so they figure, well, that wasn't COVID, but meanwhile, it's been spread. So you have to always take with a grain of salt what the data is saying. But if there's one known case, there could be 10 actual cases and we all have to act like that's true. Right. Well, you have to just consider everybody's got COVID. Yeah, right. You know. That's really what you have to do. It's true, you do. Yeah. Hence, here we are meeting on Zoom again. <laughs> That's a scary quote. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you, um, Berman and Sheila and everyone else. And, and um, yeah, we'll um, see what could happen in terms of a, a but that, like I said, that was on my agenda to bring up that tonight there's at least um, two cases that we know of in town and more in the valley. So that's, um, we're kind of doing what you're asking, but not on a day-to-day <coughs> -day basis. Um, um, okay, the, um, well, Joan, um, what have you got for us in terms of your updates today? I, I really don't have anything for this week. All right. Doesn't mean I'm not doing anything, but Long nothing we're reporting have, on. Good. Yeah. No. <laughs> but Joe wants hey, to get out of here because it's his birthday, so he's happy. <laughs> hey, Joan, are you a, are you around tomorrow? Uh, around where? Can I'll just give you a call or <laughs> yes. I can chat with you for a bit? Yeah, sure. You're welcome to do that. Uh, okay. I'm home. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'll chat with you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um. And Tony, I see you at your end. Do you have any updates uh, on the library? Nothing really new. We're still doing the porch pickup, and that seems to be going very well. And I guess that's the way we're going to be operating for a while. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, sounds like it. All right, well, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, Thank you. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about the um, proposal for cybersecurity. We talked about physical security. Now let's talk about cybersecurity for the town office. Um, and Julie, you want to speak to that? Uh, sure. Uh, so Wednesday we had a meeting um, in, uh, for budget and fi finance. And Becky Zone attended with um, a team that is interested in providing the town with cybersecurity, uh, Brian and Jeff. And um, I don't have numbers in front of me here, sorry. Um, so they had provided us with two worksheets, uh, basically money that would be needed for this year to get started, and then information for the following year for the budget and finance for fiscal year 2022. Um, I was asked to find out because we were sh looking at the 4,000 um, for this year. And I was asked to check with Nathan about the excess that was in the uh, budget from last year or that would be in this year, sorry. And uh, because the funds that were from the cruiser were not put in a restricted fund, we uh, will not be able to use them. So uh, we're going to have to think about that and how we want to finance that. So that's that's another discussion. So, but the but the cybersecurity the, as far as the the uh service itself i mean we have felt a couple times um you know we had joan's computer at one point and then uh our computer in the office so we were down several hours from work and uh having this service would definitely keep us uh would allow us to go back to work uh quickly if we were hit um you know, he, he just, he explained how real it is and, and um, 
a need that our town that our towns you know something we need to think about and, and work towards so it's just a matter of how we can put our heads together and figure that out right now so basically what they did said to us at that meeting was uh, this year out of this year's budget we'd have to come up with 4610 bucks and next year it would be 7450 for 2122 and it's roughly uh, 525 per month but I don't know how many years that 525 per month goes um, I'm not sure that was a question we didn't ask I wish I had I, I think I did have that in an email to Becky but I haven't heard back yet okay so I just wanted to bring it up because I think we have to move on this and we're doing the budget now and I think we got to put it in there and we're just going to have to try to find the 4600 bucks for this year if not we can we'd have to put more in the budget for 2122 some of that 4600 in order to get this service which I think we need it's like an assur insurance policy for our computers and everything's on the computer now so yeah we have one go down then the whole business is shut down for a day or two until maybe we can get it back maybe we can't so I, I think it's something we have to do as a town so you said this is like an insurance um it's, it's more or less an insurance policy for oh. our computer system well. and they're going to come in and do a bunch of work there as far as organizing our we've got three computers that aren't even hitched up there i think the new ones mm -hmm that we've already bought. So they're gonna do all that work too. That's included in the 4,600. So we need to figure out how we can find that money and see if we can do that. Is that something that- you. How, how did you think about it, Pat? It's a comprehensive, very comprehensive backup system so that if we were to be compromised, very similar to what UVM just went through, um, we would be we would be able to restore our data from the night before so we would never lose anything more than a day's worth of data and um it, it's just kind of doing an, a, a very conclusive system backup and um we do have some of our data that is that lives on the nemeric system which we are paying them for protecting our information too but this would encompass everything. And um, that includes what's on our system now, you know, emails are legal documents. So, um, you know, you lose a day's worth of emails, you lost a day of legal documents that you would have to go back and try to recover. So um, this assures that we've got the most up-to-date coverage of our data as we could possibly get. So is this something that you the board is voting on tonight or or um, um it's not so much that we're voting on this is an expenditure that we've already had um you know enlisted and we're just um figuring out the numbers for the budget on this yeah. okay so it's pretty much you're going to do it you just have to figure out how yeah, yeah. okay thank you are, are there other companies that have also put out bids and do they guarantee that they'll clean any computers that were infected? We had run with um, had another company that um, that kind of fell through and, and, and the guy was not able to take care of it. So this is we're going on the advice of the, um, you know, our, our someone has been giving us technical support on our computers um, for many years and being at this under a $10,000 mark, we're not required to put it out to bid. So we're basically just um, just going on the, um, you know, on the interviews and then the, the yeah. or analysis that it's, it's a good way to go. And what about cleaning the individual computers if they get infected? I would assume that it's, it includes that. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. They take care of everything. Sounds good. All right. Um, thank you, um, Julie, and everyone.
that um really um rob i see you just joined us a little um um a little later um we've talked uh, a bunch about the covid reality in in the valley and the importance of um keeping that um front and center and we were just talking about cybersecurity. is there anything that you were attending to do want to talk about because we're pretty much at the um end of our agenda here no i was supposed to be in that school thing but there's some problem with their uh with their uh, link up or something so i thought i'd see what's happening over here so yep cybersecurity. that's where it's at you know <laughs> keeping that work um <laughs> we're um basically we're going to um move into executive session to um then discuss some employee um situations and and if no one else has anything they'd like to talk about i think that's what we're going to do well oh and happy birthday to you and patty no oh, thank patty. you oh. Yeah, happy birthday to both of you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Happy New hey. Year. Yep. Yeah, I'll Bye. see you guys next year. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have a good have a good birthday and a good yeah. evening. Thank you everyone for your um your um patience and, and um persistence and being vigilant around the um the health care that we all have to take care of ourselves and then each other. So right. um, keep it up. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Right.